For decades, we have scanned the heavens, not just for planets, not just for distant stars, but for the strange, the unexplainable, the anomalies that refuse to obey the rules. The James Webb Space Telescope was built for this very purpose, to cut through the noise of the universe and show us what hides in the darkness. But nothing could have prepared us for what it has just seen. In what began as a routine observation of 3i slash Atlas, the third recorded interstellar object to ever visit our solar system Scientists saw something they should never have seen. Not reflected sunlight, not cosmic dust scattering photons, but light. Artificial light. A glow so precise and so controlled that it seemed to be radiating from within the object itself. In that instant, a simple observation became the most chilling astronomical discovery of our time. 3i slash Atlas was first noticed as a faint, lonely speck on the outer edge of the solar system, its trajectory unlike anything native to our neighborhood. It wasn't born here. It had crossed the void between stars, flung into our vicinity by some unknown event, now drifting closer like a silent messenger. Scientists expected another Oumuamua, a strange rock tumbling through space. But even from the earliest images, something was off. The object was too bright for its estimated size. Its magnitude didn't match its physical dimensions or composition. And stranger still, that brightness never flickered, never dimmed, never flared the way comets usually do when they release gas and dust. This was no frozen rock. Its light remained eerily consistent as if it was not reflecting the sun at all, but shining with its own power. So telescopes around the globe turned toward it. And eventually, James Webb, humanity's most advanced eye in the sky, was tasked with unlocking its secret. Suspended a million miles from Earth at the Lagrange point, Webb was designed to see the unseen, its instruments don't just look at light, they look at heat. What they found shocked the scientific community. The object wasn't just reflecting sunlight, it was emitting its own thermal signature, centralized, radiating outward from its core. Natural objects don't behave this way. A comet shines because the sun's rays bounce off its icy surface but this object glowed like a machine that had been switched on. Thermal mapping revealed something even more unsettling. The heat was not evenly distributed. It pulsed, faintly, irregularly, almost like a heartbeat. And that pulse wasn't random. It cycled in subtle intervals, suggesting that it might be more than mere geology. It might be technology. Theories began flying in from NASA, ESA, and leading astrophysics institutes. Could this be radioactive decay from exotic elements, subsurface friction caused by its journey, the presence of alien isotopes unknown to science? One by one, those theories failed under the weight of data. What remained was the possibility no one wanted to write down. 3i Atlas might not be a natural object at all. Its trajectory was too precise, its rotation too stable. Its lack of a cometary tail seemed deliberate, as though something shielded it from solar radiation. And then came the most disturbing finding yet. Its surface reflectivity, or albedo, was near perfect in places. Not like ice, not like dust, but like polished metal. This wasn't just a rock. This was structured, engineered, built. But perhaps the most damning evidence came from the light itself. Photometric analysis showed that Atlas wasn't reflecting light broadly like a natural object. It was emitting light in a narrow, controlled band of wavelengths. The same way we design LEDs, 
and communication lasers. Even more unsettling, that band of light contained frequencies used in our own communication and guidance systems, and as the sun's radiation shifted, the light output from Atlas shifted in response, as though some onboard system was adjusting it deliberately. It did not flicker at random, it pulsed, in a pattern just barely outside human recognition. Some astronomers suggested it might be broadcasting, others whispered an even darker idea, that it might be listening. At first, what came back from 3i Atlas looked like nothing more than chaos. A haze of electromagnetic emissions smeared across the spectrum, the kind of cosmic background noise every radio telescope in history has picked up at one point or another. Random spikes, static white noise. But scientists have learned something crucial from decades of staring into the dark. The universe doesn't waste energy without a reason. And so, the data teams kept digging. They ran the signal through filters, cross-checked it with every known natural source of electromagnetic activity. Pulsars, quasars, cosmic ray bursts, even the cosmic microwave background, and still, it refused to match. Something about it was too tidy. So they went deeper. Teams from MIT and Harvard began running Fourier transforms, mathematical tools designed to strip a signal down to its periodic components. If there was any pattern hidden in the static, this would reveal it. And that's when the ordinary static cracked open, like a wall hiding a secret door. Beneath the apparent randomness was a repeating pulse, not the kind a natural object would emit, not the slow, steady beat of a pulsar or the decaying hum of a black hole's accretion disk, but something far more deliberate. The intervals were precise, repeating at near-perfect cycles with just enough variation to avoid being purely mechanical. It was structured, almost elegant, like someone had woven a whisper into the noise hiding meaning in the chaos. This was no accidental emission. This was a signal. The scientific community split almost immediately. Some called it a beacon, a cosmic lighthouse sweeping across space waiting for someone to notice. Others theorized that it wasn't meant for us at all. That 3i Atlas was engaged in a constant data stream a kind of interstellar telemetry sending information back to wherever it came from. What disturbed everyone the most wasn't just the presence of the signal. It was its consistency. Since the very first day James Webb detected it, the pulse had never changed. Not once. Not in frequency. Not in amplitude. Not in rhythm. That implied intent. If this were a natural phenomenon, it should have evolved over time. Radiation should have caused it to decay. Its signal should have drifted or weakened as it tumbled through the solar system, but instead it remained steady, as though it had been designed to do exactly that. And then came a more chilling observation. When the object passed through regions of denser solar wind, when cosmic radiation spiked, when Earth-based observatories tried to observe it simultaneously from multiple continents, the signal seemed to shift slightly. Not enough to break its pattern, but enough to suggest it was aware of its environment. Some researchers quietly floated a disturbing hypothesis. What if this signal wasn't just broadcasting? What if it was listening too? If true, this meant Atlas wasn't just a rock humming with alien energy. It was an instrument, an active participant in the space around it, sending and perhaps even receiving information in real time. The pulse was no longer treated as random background noise. It became something far more unsettling, 
the first potential evidence of a conversation happening right above our heads, one we weren't a part of, one that might have been going on long before we even knew to listen. And as the data kept streaming in, one truth became impossible to ignore. Whatever 3i Atlas was, it was not passive. It was doing something, something deliberate. And humanity had just stumbled into its signal like an eavesdropper, overhearing a conversation not meant for them. Then it happened. The moment that sent shockwaves through every observatory on Earth. In less than two minutes, 3i Atlas erupted in a violent surge of light, its brightness climbing by nearly 40% in a spike so sudden, so unnatural, that it could not be explained by any known cometary process. Natural outgassing produces gradual changes, not explosive flares of perfect symmetry. This was not the chaotic flicker of ice sublimating in sunlight. It was precise, almost surgical, as if some hidden mechanism deep within the object had just powered on. The James Webb Telescope's thermal instruments recorded a concurrent shift in heat signature, as though the entire body of the object had been momentarily energized, its temperature climbing like a machine warming up. Scientists described it as witnessing a stone suddenly take a breath. The timing was uncanny, almost theatrical. The flare occurred precisely as the object crossed a particular threshold in the solar system, as if responding to an invisible tripwire. Panic and awe spread through the scientific community. This was no passive lump of interstellar rock, no mere relic of a distant star system wandering aimlessly through our neighborhood. Something inside it had chosen that exact moment to reveal itself, or perhaps to test something. The idea that we might have triggered this reaction simply by observing, by pinging it with radar, by shining our attention on it, began to spread like wildfire. Was it signaling back? Was it scanning us? Or was this simply its way of saying, we see you too? The flare did not last long. Just as suddenly as it began, it faded, leaving behind a quieter, steadier glow. But something fundamental had changed. Its energy profile was no longer the same. Whatever 3i Atlas had done in those minutes, it had left the object subtly different its thermal signature permanently elevated, as though some dormant system had been awakened and was now running silently in the background. Humanity was no longer looking at a passive traveler from the stars. We were staring at something alive with intent, something that had just turned its gaze back toward us. Days after the flare, Astronomers began to notice something that turned quiet unease into a global shiver. 3i slash Atlas was no longer where it was supposed to be. Its predicted orbit, carefully plotted using Newtonian mechanics and refined by AI-powered simulations, began to drift from expectation. First by fractions of a degree, then by measurable distances too precise to be dismissed as random error. The object had changed its course, ever so slightly but unmistakably, dipping closer to the plane of Earth's orbit, aligning itself more neatly with the paths of the inner planets as if correcting its navigation. Natural objects simply don't do that. A comet, an asteroid, even an interstellar interloper like Oumuamua is at the mercy of gravity and radiation pressure. They cannot decide to move. And yet 3i Atlas seemed to have done exactly that. Observers scrambled to account for the shift. Maybe a jet of gas had escaped and nudged it. Maybe we had underestimated its mass. But nothing fit the data. The change was too clean, too deliberate, 
like a spacecraft making a mid-course correction. Even more unnerving, the adjustment didn't appear to bring it toward a random destination. It seemed to be guiding itself into a position that would give it a closer pass, not just by the sun, but by us. Analysts noticed its new trajectory would now skim just inside Earth's orbital neighborhood, a near miss that wasn't quite close enough to trigger planetary defense protocols, but was far too close to ignore. Speculation turned dark. Was it maneuvering for a flyby, a survey, a rendezvous? The possibility that this object wasn't just active but aware began to dominate the conversation in private scientific circles. And perhaps most disturbing of all, the timing of the trajectory change was exact. It occurred just hours after the flare event, almost as if one had triggered the other. Whatever had awakened inside 3 i atlas was not passive. It had seen something, calculated something, and then adjusted its path with eerie precision. Humanity, for the first time, was forced to confront the chilling possibility that something in deep space had not only noticed us, but was now moving closer, on purpose. As the object drew closer, Webb and Hubble's spectroscopic instruments began to paint an even stranger picture. Its surface wasn't just shiny. It contained highly reflective alloys and rare Earth elements. Most shocking of all, there were spectral absorption lines that didn't match anything in our periodic table. These weren't the signatures of ice or stone. They were the fingerprints of something engineered, or at the very least synthesized under conditions humanity had never been able to replicate. One of the compounds matched a theoretical quantum material thought to exist only under extreme magnetic confinement. If that was true, then this object was either unimaginably old, a relic of a civilization that predates human history, or it was recent, built by an intelligence far beyond our own. As evidence mounted, fear grew, governments went silent, encryption levels rose, and observatory data was locked behind classified firewalls. But one group refused to wait, the SETI Institute. They decided to do what no one else would. They transmitted a focused radio pulse directly at 3i slash Atlas, a cosmic handshake. The message contained universal mathematical constants, the periodic table, and simple diagrams of humanity. It was a cautious hello, a question cast into the void. Days passed. Nothing. Then, on the third day, one of SETI's monitoring stations in Chile received a return pulse, a narrow band signal, distorted but unmistakably timed to arrive exactly 72 hours after the transmission. It wasn't an echo. It wasn't random scatter. It was processed and sent back. <laughs>